Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft, in for Joy Taylor. On today's show, will LeBron bounce back with the Cavs and force a Game 7? Plus, Skip explains why Kevin Durant is no longer the best player on the planet. And can Johnny Manziel secure a starting job in the Canadian Football League? Skip Shannon, let's get to it. Well, LeBron and the Cavs are facing elimination tonight at home against the Celtics. Boston is a perfect, yeah, perfect 10-0 at home in the playoffs, but they're only 1-6 on the road. LeBron is Ugh. averaging nearly 31 points a game in this series, but he looked tired during the Game uh. 5 loss on Wednesday. All right, mm. we are joined by FS1 NBA analyst Eddie House. Eddie, thanks for being here. Mm. Morning, what do you morning. expect? Good morning. What are you looking for? What do you expect from LeBron? Well, this was the, this is the fifth time that a team has held him under his average of 27. So anything under 27, this man has bounced back with a 46, 45, 43, and a 42. Mm. So he's averaging mm. 44 points, nine and a half rebounds, nine and a half assists on 64% shooting. So I'm expecting nothing less but a 40 ball out there from me. Really? Yeah. Ball. Oh, I mean, wow. it, for them to win, he's going to have to put that up. He's well, going to have to find some energy somewhere. Be hyperbaric chamber, yeah. um, a lot of water, hydration. IVs. Uh, if, if, if needed. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it takes to, to get back there. But I, I'm expecting nothing short but a, a fantastic performance by LeBron. Mm. Now, what am I going to get from the love man, Kevin Love? Is he going to show us any love or show his teammates some love by giving him some extra help is or LeBron doesn't have Kyle help. is Kyle Corver gonna show I don't up know. I mean you know you seen Jordan Clarkson had two wide open shots yeah if he knocks those down we might be talking a different story right mm. now but guys got to do their job I think LeBron's gonna come out and and put the team on his back is just how many of those guys is he gonna be able to you carry? know it's too bad this guy isn't helping LeBron tonight because you'd make some big oh, I'll shots. I'll make some shots yeah. for sure. Well, I'm going to echo what Eddie said. Mm -hmm. This is what we know about LeBron James. When facing elimination, he has the highest he has scoring average in NBA history. Yep. He's in first place. I'm not going to even tell you who's in second place because that's none of my business right now, Eddie. And as Eddie <laughs> mentioned, <laughs> in his last six games when he's faced elimination, four of those six, he's had a 40-piece. And we know what mm -hmm. he did against yeah. Indiana in the game mm -hmm. seven. So I'm not surprised. So I'm expecting a virtuoso. Mm -hmm. How good of a virtuoso? I'm talking about the mm -hmm. Beatles on the Ed Sullivan show. Skip, you remember that? I watch it. Yeah, that's what I expect. Mm. That's what I expect. Mm -hmm. And I expect as many people to watch tonight and watch mm. this man do what he does. Mm. Now, the question is, it, will there be some love in the air at the queue? Can I can, can JR give me a look, Skip? I don't need JR to give me 20. I don't need George Hill to give me 20. Mm. But can you give me in the teens? Can you give me 13? Can you give me 14? Can you give me 12? Poor little boy. Can 11. I get 12? 11. Yeah, I'll give me something. Anything more than two. Right. Anything more than zero, JR. Anything more than three, George Hill. Can you give us that? Mm. And I guarantee you, and Brian, I trust. He will deliver us from those evil Celtics. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So he's God. I ain't see Skip. You mm. keep trying to put words in my mouth. We're gonna, I'm not going to be blasted. I'm just telling you, we are going to get struck by lightning one day on this show, and you're going to be the reason <laughs> why. Because you are daring <laughs> what the doing? man upstairs. All I said, it, yeah. if I get a little help, the other, that Skip, he's 6'9". Yeah. You know he can walk on water. Yeah. Close. <sighs> you know, Jenny. I'm so tired. I don't think I can do the rest of this topic. I, I'm just. Oh, okay. I got. Really? I got to take. Can, can you take me out? I, I just. I, I well, how about you? Can somebody up? give me some water? I, I, need, no, no, I need some water. Hey, Shannon, let me have some water. No, no. I'm gonna fall off my chair because I can't. I'm dehydrated. How about you do like you? Oh. <laughs> I'm dehydrated. I, I need. Oh. I, hey, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie, you know what? I, I want you to do like you. I want you to do like your like Sorry. your best player in the country, yeah. uh, Kevin Durant. <laughs> I want you to go stand at the top of the key. And do nothing on the last <laughs> shot. Or I want you to pass up the last shot. I want you to do that. I just hope that LeBron James has been power sleeping in his hyperbaric he chamber because he's going to need all of it tonight. I want to see LeBron be engaged and in attack mode from junk tonight for four quarters, not the first and the fourth, for four quarters. And I want to see him set the tone on defense as well as offense. And as, if he does, as we saw him do in three and four, especially three, they will win by 25 tonight because they have won by an average of 20 in the two previous home games against these poor little Celtics with no Kyrie and no Gordon Hayward. You know and I know this should be over by now, and it's not. They are facing Game 7 at Boston, which brings me to these poor little Celtics. 
yeah, they got talent, but they got a first-year talent and a second-year talent and a third-year talent in the starting lineup. So they also have a free shot tonight. They got no pressure on them whatsoever. All the pressure tonight is on your guy, on the king in his palace. Am I right about that? I think he always has pressure Okay, on he him does. And, and it's not like he hasn't felt this before. Exactly. So I give you that. But these Celtics are in a real sweet spot tonight because you think they're going to come out free swinging, right? Of course. Because you can shoot it with conviction or abandon or whatever you want to call it. You can just free shoot it, right? No, you, you don't want to give him a chance in game seven. You better go in there and don't well, be okay, no free so spirit and just this is one and no mulligans, no mulligans. We ain't going to get, get that one back. Okay, but remember, they are 10-0 and 0 in their house, and they must feel pretty good about themselves against this Cavaliers team, maybe not against the King, mm -hmm. but the supporting cast is not supported on the road, right? right? Okay, so don't you think they feel pretty good about yeah, they themselves? They do. They feel real good. They should feel good. I though. agree. They but should. create that a monster is, over there. That man is a different animal in a game seven. When all the marbles, when you push everything mm -hmm. to the center mm -hmm. and you dealt the cards, that's a whole different ball game, Skip Bayless, mm. because I know what they've done, but they haven't. I mean, Milwaukee Bucks go in game seven. That's one mm. thing. But that animal there, mm. you're talking about pressure. He feels no pressure. Mm. You know when you feel pressure? When you don't know what the hell you're doing. Mm. He's well, he <laughs> really? well knowledgeable of what's going on. Well, and he will handle himself <laughs> a well. My friend Eddie House sat there firsthand, in part on the bench, but sometimes on the floor. In, was it in Dallas or back in Miami? I can't remember in where Game that, Six was. That, uh, no, game, game Six game was six in, in Miami. Miami, Miami but right? It, it started in Dallas. It though. started in Dallas, started and in you Dallas. sat there, and that was a closeout game, and and all it, the chips got pushed. You know the, what? He's not like that no more. Again, right. I'll tell you what. I, I, there's no pressure on him. He's he's been feeling this pressure since he came into the league. Since mm -hmm. he was probably a junior in high school, he's been feeling the pressure as being the chosen one and the next guy to carry the torch. So. But I'm, I'm going to remind the you, other there, was, guys. there was this, but there was another series. I know it's way back when against these Boston Celtics, his last go round in Cleveland, and the owner accused LeBron James of quitting in the closeout game six against the Celtics. That's back in 2010. That was a that, right? was, a, that was a while back. That's a yeah. that's a while back. All but those I are think, wild back. Yeah, yeah, I think the pressure though. Let's is just going, erase those. No, you can't erase them. It's yeah. there, but he's not he's not played like that since. Yeah. But the pressure is on all the other guys on huh. that team. And then there I don't, was another closeout game in 2014 against my Spurs. At Boston's not feeling San Antonio, any pressure, and boy, LeBron just they have nothing to lose. Dry. Yeah, no, nothing. And on top of the day, they're babies. Boston are yeah. babies, so they don't know anybody. They going in. What's happening? They, okay. They're creating a monster, though. Jason Tatum. I said here last year, said yeah. he'll be a prolific scorer. Yeah. And you was like prolific. I was like, he's gonna be a prolific scorer. Okay. They're creating a monster with him. With First Jason year, Tatum. 20 years old, rookie. You expect him to rise and shine tonight? Is he gonna take the game over? I don't know. No, uh, the game I mean, will be taken over by one guy. He happened to be yeah. 33 years of age. Where are you from? He's from Akron, Ohio. He's six foot Are you nine, sure he's? Plus. I, I want to know for sure. Do you know the birth certificate? Are you sure he's not 43? <laughs> he, Is he 43? <laughs> well, if you, if Born he, in 1974. No, I tell you what. That, that if, guy looked 43 to me. If Am I right? If he's 43, doing what he's doing. Boy, somebody in the eve of trouble. Are you worried, Eddie, about him. how he looked? I mean, did, did he look <coughs> tired? I mean, physically, you could see it in his face. Well, I, I think more so it's mental tired. Okay. You know, I, I think carrying the load all the time, and when you're trying to get guys off, when mm -hmm. you're trying to make a comeback, that could wear on you mentally, and it's mm -hmm. been all year. all year. They've been having different lineups, and guys been injured, so he's been trying to figure it out all year. So it could be mentally taxing. The one thing that he needs to do when he comes out, though, he has to set the tone defensively. He does. If he does not set the tone, it, they might not. He has to do everything tonight. He like, gonna do it. He, he got to do it. Mm. And he's punishing. You every, better hope he's he gonna do it. everything. You better hope. Every. You will not show up on Monday morning if he fails tonight. He's doing it. You will not show I got, up. I got. I brought the goat mask. I got another one too. Do you? Yeah. You got, a different, you got different. Yeah, I got a bunch mask? of gold. Yeah. Okay, we are not even through game six yet. So yeah. we'll wait for that yeah. match. Yeah, the, the, goat <laughs> mask coming out, the goat mask coming out on Monday. No mercy. All right, and Thank whether you. or not he is tired, he did add another accomplishment uh, to his resume did. yesterday. Yeah. Just keep on building him. He bro. was yeah. a unanimous choice for the All-NBA first team. This is the 12th time LeBron has made the first team, the most of any player in history. All right, he averaged nearly 28 points per game this season and set career highs with about nine assists, nine rebounds, per game. Shannon, what does this say you know, about what, LeBron? Shannon, please. What? Huh? What does it say? <laughs> it, it, say what, it says what it I do to be true say. all along. 
that goat Jane <laughs> is a goat. Is the, he a sheep or a goat? He's a goat. Get, okay. It's Groundhog's Day for me. There's three mm. things that's 100% for certain. Yeah. Death, taxes, and LeBron James being first team all NBA. Really? Book it. Book it. Really? There's a, nobody in the history of the game can say they have this many huh. first team all NBAs. He has 12. The other guys, Kobe has 11. It took him 20 years to get those. Mm. Carl Malone has 11. Mm. It took him 19 years to get those. Really? Now, I feel very comfortable in saying when it's all said and done, he will have more first and second team all NBAs than any other player mm. because he just needs one more to tie Kareem, uh, Kobe, and Carl Malone for mm. 15. Really? Now, he has 12. Think about that, Skip. So, wait, are you suggesting he's going to fall to second team at some point soon? or Not soon, Skip. Mm. Are you are you suggesting that he's going to leave the game next year? I don't know. So I'm saying he, he looks tired to me, man. He looks like he needs a long rest. Yeah. He needs to go rip Van Winkle. I mean, I mean, you averaging 33 and nine and nine in mm -hmm. the playoffs. That's what you know. That's what he's averaging. Mm. 33, nine and nine. That's what he's averaging, Skip Baylor. Chugging that water at the end of the game. That was that dehydrated. That's, that, that, that's that happens. high test. Yeah. That's that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Skip Baylor's the sustained greatness in which he's been able to achieve. Yeah. This is not, granted. I understand if you play, if you do something long enough, you'll have a lot of it. If I collect cans for 20 years, I'm mm -hmm. going to have a lot of cans at the end of those 20 years. Mm -hmm. That's but, pretty much. LeBron's been collecting cans. No, 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 no. Yeah, a lot of cans. He's been painting these Andy Warhol cans. Oh, has he? You know, you get mm -hmm. something by Andy Warhol, it's worth a museum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. 12 first teams. Because think about it, Skip. Think about the guys he had to go against mm -hmm. as far as this, because there's only five slots. Mm. So he kind of had to go against Garnett, Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, mm. Dirk Nowitzki, mm. Paul Pierce. All the, <laughs> he overlapped all of them. Mm. And when it's all said and done, <laughs> still mm. standing. Yeah. You know that song? Uh, mm. uh, what's that song? Uh, I can't. Uh, I can't sing well, but I know. I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Elton John. Yes. I'm still standing. You know he framed on that pin. I'm still standing. <laughs> we, we, He's still standing, Skip Bayless. We we just saw Elton in concert in Vegas. We did. So good. fifteen mm. years, Skip. <laughs> fifteen. Yeah. Twelve. First team. How mm. many did John have? How many first team? You don't mind me asking. I mean, hmm. I think he had ten. Tell me when it's my turn, Jenny. You, you go ahead. Yeah. Oh, my turn? I guess it is your turn. Oh, yeah. thank you, Shannon, for the floor. Now it's my turn, Take my time. So, in Michael Jordan's, think about this, in his first 11 full seasons with the Chicago Bulls, he made second team All-NBA as a rookie, then 10 straight first teams. Not That's true. That's through the Bulls. Through his, his 11 second? full seasons. What a fool me. Huh? Well, full, when he didn't miss the season. Okay, what about eight, so what about 85, 86? Did he make NBA, all NBA? When he was hurt? I'm just saying, that was, was that I'm a I'm talking season? about the full, when he played the, the full season, he made 10 straight. My goodness. Huh? Well, I'm you, just saying. You all these caveats. No, Get there's Bayless. no caveat. So, again, as a rookie, he made second team. And also, in his rookie season, would you believe that Michael Jeffrey Jordan led the whole NBA in points scored as a rookie? Would you believe as a rookie he made the all-star team and he led his team to the playoffs? None of which LeBron did. Hold on. I mean, LeBron didn't do any of if that. If you don't mind me asking, can you tell the people what this record was? He had a losing record. Okay, he made, they, they got in the playoffs. They, uh, what a still, losing record. I don't care how you do it. It happens all the time in both, both sides. Are you proud of that? Yeah, LeBron as a rookie. James, LeBron James, they never had to go to the huh? playoff with a losing record. Well, he was playing in the Eastern Conference, don't, and he couldn't even get those Cavaliers to the playoffs. Do he was the best player on the planet. He was the chosen one. He had a not tattooed then. on his not back. Then. Not then. He already had it tattooed on his so back. He was. He was chosen. He was anointed. Yep. So, Michael Jordan lost out first team that year to one Magic Johnson, who led the Lakers to the best yeah. record in the West, and to Isaiah Thomas, who led the whole NBA in assists that year. So, is there any shame in that? I don't think so, to be no. second team. But I could make a case that he should have been first team over Isaiah. I can make that case because statistically, in the big picture, boy, he had a monster first year in this league. So, now let's go to LeBron James. Mm -hmm. 15 NBA seasons versus what I just talked about, 11 first full seasons for LeBron, I mean, for uh, Michael. And so, in that first year, he missed first, second, and third team. He didn't even make any, he didn't even make third team mm -hmm. all NBA. How can you, I, I don't know how that can happen. That's, that's like, that's kind of a, a taint on your well, legacy, well, how, right? Let me tell you how it happens. When yeah. you got 
uh, uh, Tim Duncan, mm -hmm. Kevin Garnett, Dirk Nowitzki. Yeah, you're probably going to hey, miss out. Well, go to third team and tell me who's there. I, I, I can't remember all these guys. Yeah. Ron Artest, really? You, you can't beat out Ron Artest? Well, I mean, he's got 12 of them. Huh? He got well, 12 I'm just now. saying, you, you missed it all as a rookie. So then he Next made year you make the second team. He made second team in 05. Then he makes first team in 06. And then a shocking thing happens. Yeah. You're talking about death and taxes? Yeah. I, I, something happened. Death and taxes didn't happen because in 07, LeBron plummeted back to second team. So once Jordan broke through in his second year, he just went first, 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 first. If you don't mind me asking. LeBron, what happened in 07, Shannon? Tell the people, if you don't mind me asking, tell them what happened in 07. Shouldn't he have made it? Because guess what? What did he do, Skip? He ended up in the NBA Finals. He okay, but this is a regular season thing. Yeah, but I'm saying he averaged 29, 28 well, points well, a game. Well, time out. Time out. Yeah. You're, you're sweeping under the carpet, as many of you blind witnesses what? do. What happened? Because in 06, when he was first team, he averaged 31. Yes. Next year, all of his stats fell. He had an off year in 07 because it went from 31 that he averaged in 06 down to 27 and his free throws fell from 74 percent all the way down to 70 percent and his three-point shooting fell from 34 to 32 and even in deep dive offensive win shares he was 12 the year before he fell all the way to eight so every stat across the board was down 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 mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. and even his assists dropped from 521 the year before to 470. Everything fell. Okay. So the NBA is looking at LeBron as maybe a little overrated in 07. Like okay, he, okay he so, fell. so moving forward, so yeah. now. Okay, but wait a second. That never happened to Jordan. So you're making a case that, that 12 makes him better than Michael Whoa, Jordan? Hold really? On. So, so in other words, how many times did he make it over 11-year span? You say it's 11 full seasons. How yeah. many times did he make it? 10 straight after that. So over the next 12 years, how many times has LeBron made consecutive All-NBAs? 11. Yeah. So, if, so yeah. any metric that you use, you take any block of time. You say the first, you join uh, 11 years, he made it 10 times. I know, you take LeBron's 12 years, he made it 11 times. So I'm trying to figure out what you're trying to get at, Skip Bayless. I, I'm getting at that LeBron broke through in 06 and made first team, and then he fell to second team. That never, ever happened to Michael Jordan. And then he broke it would have been preposterous. And then, he broke, and then he broke through again in 08, and then what happened, Skip? Well, it's 2018 now, and he's still yeah, on it. That's fine. He should. He's, Why should he's he? one of the best players in the game. No, I ain't no, I ain't no uh, one of. He well, is the, okay, the but, best. But I'm pretty sure that Michael's legacy of first team All NBA is better than LeBron's. I don't think LeBron's so. got some tarnish on it. No, no. Huh? Hold on. He got tarnished. Okay, Rookie let me, year let me, in 07? No, no, no. Who has the most? Now, because what you keep telling me, you keep telling me 6 and 0 is better than 3 and 5. Okay, but so LeBron, we, LeBron's played 15 years, took Michael's 11 full seasons no, with no, the no, Bulls. No, 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 no. So did they stop handing out all NBA when, to, when he went to the Wizards? Wait a second. He took three years off, he retired, and then he had a ceremonial last go round, last hurrah with the Washington Wizards, Jenny. for which, hang on. Hold on. Are you going to let me finish or yeah, not? Let you finish. Okay, so he had a ceremonial last two years with the Wizards, of which he was also the GM, so he was like a player GM, and he was 39 and 40 years of age. I can't wait until this guy is 39 and 40 and I get to critique what he's doing at 39 and 40. Okay. Jenny, can you put those on a yeah. second? Yeah. I kind of like these. Yeah. Oh, nice. Now you can't see I, a thing. I can read better. Hey, Jenny, weird. do you see any care out there? Do you yeah. see anybody that care that Michael Jordan was yeah. ceremonial at wa in Washington? Okay, well, I'm not going to count those years. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm counting. Well, I'm not going to count. I'm counting them. But wait, counting LeBron's them. still 33 years of age. Why you... I, I'm going all the way up through age 34 of Michael Jordan. Let's do level playing field Okay, here. So, so at age 34, Michael Jordan had how many first-team All-NBAs? He had 10. 10. Okay, at 33 years of age, yeah. LeBron James got 12. Okay, but he's played 15 seasons because he came straight in. You're telling me, Skip, all I'm saying is that you're telling me that through the same age, you keep using 34. I'm using 33. So at a year younger, he has two more All-NBAs. So when he gets to be 34, it might be three. Because guess what? He's still poor. Hey, my guy's still poor in cement. Your guy concrete's dry. He had that quick dry cement. It's dry skin. Mm. They can't do no more with it. It, it didn't quick dry. Oh, it's it, quick it dry cement. We got a little good. We got a little good stuff that they use for the yeah. Taj Mahal. Yeah, remember not that one in not that one in Atlanta. City. Remember, I'm my, Taj Mahal. my guy was six and zero in the finals. With it, six MVPs. But see what you did. Yeah. See six and zero now. 
So if yeah. rings, see, Skip, stop doing that. Because yeah. I I'm, I'm keep telling you, if mm. we're going to use only rings as an accomplishment, yep. Bill Russell is it, and we need to stop. Because he has 11 rings, and he has five MVPs. So mm -hmm. if that's the, if that's what we're going to use, Skip, mm -hmm. we need to put Michael Jordan, put him onto the side where he belongs, Skip. Mm. But that's not what we're doing. Mm. All I'm saying is, is that my guy is passing your guy off the record. I don't even know what 866 is. I, I don't even know why I brought up 866. Jenny, mm. at one point in time, there was yeah. a certain guy in Chicago had 866 consecutive games in which he scored at least 10 points. Mm. Now that thing ain't no telling when it's all said and done. It might be 1,200. Mm. But, Skip Baylor, think about it now. Look who has to go at these young, hungry lions coming. Mm -hmm. The KDs, the Giannis's, the Anthony you, you Davis's, the Boogie Cousins. You just told me KD Cousins. was completely overrated. You just told me that. He still has to go against him. Oh. He still try to make this first team. Huh. KD got six first teams. Six mm -hmm. of them. You know what's funny? I was just, just checking this out last night. Mm -hmm. and I saw that seven of Michael Jordan's first team All-NBAs featured four other Hall of Famers, big names, big golden years players. Mm -hmm. And to my count, only three of LeBron's feature four other Hall of Famers. Hello, so, hello, 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 Skip. Hold on, hold on, time out, time out. I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. So on the team, do you think Kevin DeGarnett, do you think Dirk Nowitzki, do you mm -hmm. think KD, do you mm -hmm. think Tim Duncan, do you think Anthony Davis, do you think any of these guys will be in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, they will. Okay, then. Yeah. So you can't say that, because right now, mm -hmm. when Michael Jordan made that team with those guys, mm -hmm. they weren't in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but you knew that was coming. Oh, so, oh. Magic and Michael and Tim, Moses. Tim and Duncan, and, Dirk uh, Nowitzki, uh, KD. Kevin Garnett, mm. how are we going to do this, Skip Bayless? How are we going to explain 07 when, when you crater and you fall to second team? It just shouldn't happen. You shouldn't have even brought this up. If, if you, you exposed yourself so and got run over, and I feel sorry and, for and, you. And, 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 let me ask you. And so in his fourth year, he mm. built a second team All-NBA. Mm. He took a team to the finals. If you don't mind mm. me asking, how far did Michael Jordan go in his fourth year in the NBA? He was first team All-NBA, but how far did he go? It took Michael seven years to win a championship. Why? It took LeBron nine years to win a championship. Nine years? Nine, but who was How younger? could it be nine but who years? Was younger? And by the way, LeBron had to, to take his talents to South Beach and join forces Thank to win a championship. Michael never would have left Chicago. But he didn't what? care. Michael had the luxury of having uh, Dean Smith, arguably a top uh, five college okay. coach of that's, all time. That's college okay. basketball. Okay, what about Phil Jackson? Uh, when, is, when, when is LeBron going to get to play for a Phil Jackson, a Greg uh, Popovich, or a Pat Riley? He could not play. He could not function under those coaches because LeBron coaches LeBron. I you know that. it, and I know so it. So let me get this right. So only, so only LeBron mm -hmm. couldn't play up underneath these great coaches. I don't but think Magic so. Johnson could. Bill Russell could. Mm -hmm. Under all back. Mm -hmm. uh, so all, all these other Pantheon greats somehow mm -hmm. could manage to swallow their like. It's like because what you guys like to do, mm -hmm. you want to make it seem like only LeBron James has an ego. Mm -hmm. That only LeBron James is selfish to an extent. Mm -hmm. Stop it, Skip Bayless. He is you the, know the drama great, king, and you the, know it. The only thing, the only difference between LeBron James and all these other Pantheon greats, mm -hmm. none of them mm -hmm. has had the power that LeBron James. I'll buy has. that. I give none you that. Of them We're talking about off the court. None of them. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. On the court. Off. On it. Oh, you tell me the referees are in his pocket? No, so no, 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 no. I'm saying, oh. I'm saying in the game of basketball, oh. he wails his hammer, that power of hammer, oh, that, 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 oh, that, that power. I thought that you he meant had... politically. Stop, Skip. Huh? You know, I know what you're trying to get at here. No. Mm. But the fact of the matter mm. is, he shifts mm. the balance of power. Really? Because wherever he goes, that's the team that's favored to represent the Eastern Conference. Okay. So how has he lost five finals? I don't get that. How did, did, how, did Michael two plus get, two. how did Michael only get to six? Only get to only, six? Only. Well, that's pretty good only. to me. Bill Russell got to 12. Mm -hmm. Sam Jones got to 11. Mm -hmm. Oh, how? So people have been to more. Yeah, we're talking about modern era. Oh, no, no, no. So mm -hmm. what, they just started playing basketball in mm -hmm. 1984? Because yeah, I could that. swear Dr. James Naismith invented this game with a piece the, back the NBA, way back The then. NBA got discovered about 1980. Don't do that, Skill Bailey. Well, you know it and I know Don't it. Don't do that. When Magic and Larry came out, that's okay. about when it started. Okay, I get, yeah. I get all of that. Yeah. So I just want to make sure I'm correct, hearing you correctly. Yeah. They started taking all NBA in 1984. They stopped it when he retired in 99 mm -hmm. and didn't pick it back up until when, 2007? No. Oh, okay. 2007. I'm sorry you had to... I don't know, guys. Suffer through that. 22. The guy 22. Mm. The guy is 22 years of age. Oh. So at 22 years of age, wow. Michael Jordan was on what, Skip? Second team uh. All-NBA. Uh. LeBron James. LeBron James at what? At 21 was first team. Yeah, but it, they're both starting in the NBA for the first time.
Here we go. At 18. Well, yeah. Michael Jordan was starting on a college basketball team at 18. My guy was in the NBA doing grown man things. Yeah. Grown man things. All right. No mercy. Well, the Warriors are down 3-2 after last night's loss to the Rockets. Kevin Durant scored a game-high 29 points, but he did not make a shot in the fourth quarter. And this came after the Game 4 loss when Durant passed to Klay Thompson instead of shooting in the closing second. So, Skip, after these two games, mm -hmm. these two interesting finishes, do you uh, still think yeah. Durant is the best player on the planet? I do not. <laughs> wow. What do I always tell you? I evaluate greatness from night to night to night. I'm all about what have you done for me lately, or as you say, you've got to update your resume yeah, yeah. game after game. Yeah. I covered the great Michael Jordan, and trust me, night after night after night after night, he just got greater and greater and greater. So in this case, after what I have seen the last two games, and especially, as Jenny points out, in the last two fourth quarters, I can no longer call Kevin Durant the best player on the planet because I can only call him Kevin Ducant. That's what he's been, <laughs> Kevin Ducant, in the last two fourth quarters. And I cannot and will not even remotely try to defend him because he has been incomprehensibly incapable of taking over the games that they desperately need him to take over. Mm -hmm. These are the money games. This is what matters. This is what counts. The regular season is fine. The Spurs in the first round is fine. He dominated the Spurs. The little Pelicans, the baby Pelicans, whatever. I, I know they got a lot of talent, but Kevin Durant dominated them in round two. For that matter, he dominated these Rockets in game one of this round. Dominated him in 30, game two, too. Well, he had 38 yeah, in game but, two. Yeah, it was a little shaky, but he had 37 and 38. Okay. I'll, I'll even give you that. Okay. But I'm saying the last two games, Kevin Durant, where are you and who are you? What happened to the reigning finals MVP who against LeBron James went for 35, 8, and 5 in five games and shot 47% from the three-point line in the NBA finals? That's incomprehensibly great to me. Mm -hmm. So all I can give him now is he leads the playoffs in free throw shooting. You know and I know he is a deadly free throw shooter. He's 93%. He's made 94 of 101. That's hard to do. LeBron James now at 73%, so you're going to lose another case of Diet Mountain Dew on that because you said 80 or better. So that's pretty much over. But otherwise, this, this guy named Kevin Durant that I used to love, he's getting dominated and bullied and pushed around and beat up by much smaller players named P.J. Tucker and Trevor Ariza, and Eric Gordon, and even CP3 at six feet tall. They give Chris Paul six feet. I don't even think he's six feet yeah. tall. And he has been defending Kevin Durant. Yep. As you say, he's just been rooting him out of the post. He's been bodying him up. He's been bullying Kevin Durant <laughs> at seven feet tall with like an eight-foot wingspan. Yeah! And Kevin Durant never the arms longer than Chris Paul is tall. You know what? I think that Chris could... Paul. That, get about the post. That, that might not be an exaggeration. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure they might be. We should do that measurement sometime. <laughs> but the point is, last night on two huge possessions, after he failed so miserably back at Oracle, he became no better than a decoy. I thought he was running from the basketball because the first one on the Steph drive play, he just went and stood in the far corner. And then on the second one on the Steph up court to Draymond that he butterfingered, Kevin Durant's just standing on the sideline at midcourt like, I'm out, man. Don't, don't, don't pass the ball to me. And you know what happened at the end of game four back at Oracle? He came up real small, did, did the seven-foot Kevin Durant. He should have pulled up from 20 feet and just shot it. Or he should have at least tried to drive because he's a deadly clutch free throw shooter. And instead, he weakly and lamely bounced past the basketball to a hobbled Clay Thompson as he's running the baseline away from the basket. Don't what say. are you doing? What are you doing? I am out. Kevin well, if you don't, can't. If, if you don't mind me asking, who is the best player on the planet? Well, it's not Latired. No, I can no, tell no, you no, that. No, 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 no. Huh? It's not Latired. I, I don't know who it is. <laughs> you, don't know. you know what? On back to back nights, the two best players disqualified themselves. That's what I saw. I'm not sure. You know what? The best player is TBD, as in TBD. It ain't no TBD. Yeah, Everybody yeah. is universally no, regarded no, that no, the no. baddest man that can dribble a basketball on the planet Earth. Yeah. 
is one LeBron James. Mm. And to your point, Kevin Durant was never the best player. Mm. So how could he be all of a sudden be? You can't unbe. Did you what watch the finals last year? Skip. You keep saying Kevin Durant, he did average 35. But LeBron, you make it seem like LeBron James averaged 10. LeBron James Who averaged made all 30, the big shots in 30, that series? 33, 10, and 12. Do you remember the shot of shots right in LeBron's grill? First of all, Kevin Durant was never the best player on the planet because LeBron James has two games in which he has more assists in those games than Kevin Durant has in this series. Mm. LeBron James, and everybody said, oh, Kevin Durant is a better scorer. But if you look at their career scoring averages, LeBron James is higher, 27.2 mm -hmm. to 27.1. LeBron beats him in rebounds. LeBron beats him in assists. So How many scoring titles whoa, does LeBron whoa, 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 Well, I want to know if he's the best player on the planet. So, Michael had 10. So it's all about scoring? Yeah, that's a, that's a big qualifier. Bernard, Help me out. No, how many does he have? Bernard King. Alex, there are a lot of guys that's led yeah. the league in scoring that was never thought of as the best players in the NBA. Well, Michael Jordan did it 10 times to LeBron's one, and I think he was regarded as the best of all time. How many so, times did he lead? And his... wait, Kevin Durant has led this league in scoring four times to LeBron's one, just for the record. How many, Go ahead. How many times has Kevin Durant led his team in rebounding or assists? Well, like Michael, he's high in assist. See, he's a five assist a game guy who against the Rockets is down to two assists. Whoa. Why is that? I, I, I don't know. Because he has become a high dribble ball stopper in the high post because they just give it to him and he starts dribbling because he's got nowhere to go. That's none of my business right now, Skip. I'm, I'm, I got my a bigger fish to fry. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how can a man playing with the greatest shooter of all time, a two-time MVP, yeah. and Steph Curry. Klay Thompson, one of the greatest clutch shooters, I mean, jump shooters in NBA history. And you have zero assists in two or five games, and then you have one assist in another game. When you got those guys, I, and you keep telling me, oh, he plays so much better deep. Jenny Skip Bell has been hammering in my head. If you didn't know better, you think Kevin Durant is seven foot tall, can sit in the chair and slide his feet like mm -hmm. Alvin Robertson. You know he was great. He got a triple. He got a quad. No, triple. I've told you he's a rim protector. Hold on. Oh, oh, how about, okay, how about this here? He protecting the rim. In five games against the Rockets, he has one steal and two blocks. Mm hmm What are you protecting, Skip? Terrible. He's been terrible. No, wait, no, 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 wait who was fourth in the league in rebounds this year? Fourth? Who was fourth? Behind three centers? No, no, no. Kevin you mean Durant? block shots. You mean block shots. I'm block shots. Yes, yeah. Block shots. Yes. Fourth. Really? Fourth? And he's tall. He's taller than all the guys other than Gobert. Mm -hmm. He's taller than Anthony Davis. He is. He's taller than every guy that on that list except Rudy Gobert. Okay, so he does what but, he should do. But where did he finish on his team in rebounding? He's not the most physical player. Okay, where did he finish in assists? Who's the who, who's the go-to guy on the Golden State Warriors? <laughs> Who did Draymond call in the parking lot after they blew a three-one lead to your team? Who did he call, according to you? That's your and Draymond got somewhat an exaggerated Draymond story. got an opportunity to call the guy because the guy that he called had blown a 3-1 lead to him. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, where did they do that at? Tell me what Draymond told him. You always tell the story. What he told him? Yeah. I need your help. I, 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 I need, need your help. help. He, he made, Please come help us. Please LeBron, save us. Uh, LeBron did it again. Yeah. He, he, he hit me and Steph and Clay over the head and took mm. that title. Okay, mm. Jordan. There you go. That's what That's he said. the guy. What and a, they made Made him the first option. He became the alpha on this team, and in his first year, with the weight of the NBA world on his shoulders, because everybody wanted Kevin Durant to fail in the finals last year after he left Russell Westbrook high and dry. Yeah. What did he do? They he right. rose right above the king, and he took the whole series over. <laughs> he was sensational in the Kevin, finals. I mean, think about this. He went and joined a team that had a two-time MVP already on it, in his prime. He joined a team that had three all-NBA players on it and at you know the what? time. That two-time MVP, Steph Curry, willingly said, I will take a back seat because we need you. Did he join a team that had won 73 games, had a two-time league MVP, mm -hmm. and the only man to win that award unanimously? Sure, and what happened? He got his ring. Okay, yeah. but I'm just trying to figure out. You, you keep telling me that at, at no point in the, since he's been in the NBA, mm -hmm. has Kevin Durant been better than LeBron? Not at any point. He was in five games of the finals. Skip. He was. He was on the better Everybody team. saw so it. Let me ask you a question. If you flip positions, you put LeBron on the Warriors, you put KD on the Cavs. What? What's happening? Was Kevin Love on the Cavs last year? Really, Skip. Was Kyrie Irving Rich, on the Cavs? Really, Skip. Yeah, really Kyrie Irving, like really, really, so let me really. Ask you, so if you ask the general manager. Was who, Kyle Korver on the Cavs last year? Really, Skip. Skip. Is he? If Kyle Korver's the fourth best three-point shooter in NBA history. But you didn't want LeBron to pass. Let me wow. ask you a question. Let's just say for the sake of argument, they were to hold a draft right now. Mm -hmm. And you can pick any point guard you want. 
who's going first, Kyrie or Steph Curry, if the general managers pick? I don't know. That's a close call. If you, if you don't mind me asking, you have a draft right now. Who yeah. are they taking, Clay Thompson or Kyle Korver? You know what? Steph Curry has regularly come up small in the postseason. You know it, and I know it. A lot of GMs might go Kyrie on that. All one. I know is he got two MVPs. Yep. And you know and I know Kevin Durant, and he's tremendous. Mm -hmm. He's a great scorer, one of the greatest that's ever played in the NBA. Yep. But at no point in time in his career, since he set foot in the NBA, has he been better than that guy? Mm. O'Bron James. O'Bron James. He was last year. O'Bron James. You know what? starts to irritate me about Kevin Durant. I read one story after another about how he has now become the impresario of Bay Area Silicon Valley him. entrepreneurs. That he's got his hands in business upon business upon investment. Let that investment. man get his hustle on. Okay, that's fine. But I'm wondering if he won his MVP in the finals and won his ring and he finally said, you know what? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. No, he, he I don't need this. Skip, series, he's right? just not as good as LeBron and that's oh, okay. Oh, really? That's the GOAT! Oh. Either way, Durant is going to have to be mm. better. I mean, uh, he's got to I would say. And by way. the way, to your point, this ain't over yet. It's not over. Yeah. I if evaluate he from night to night. I don't got to evaluate because mm. I already know. Well, we know what <laughs> you did. 12 times, first team, yeah. unanimous. Jenny put those glasses on and they're all wine colored. Oh, right. oh, Jenny <laughs> said, I need me a pair of them mm. things because I can see crystal clear. Yeah. I like the what have you done for me now, but that's good. I'm no right. mercy. The Warriors are on the brink of elimination after losing in Houston last night. Kevin Durant did not hit a shot in the fourth quarter, and his team did not score in the final minute of the fourth. Steph Curry had a chance to give them the lead. He missed a floater, and then Draymond Green turns the ball over in the closing seconds. It's kind of ugly. We are joined once again by Eddie House. Eddie, who is most to blame for that loss? Eddie, before you go, Skip, did you know LeBron James mm. is part owner in Liverpool? Yeah. Yeah. Way to get LeBron. Yeah, LeBron. <laughs> on part of Liverpool. They're playing for the, the championship today. Yeah. Yeah, LeBron. Okay. So? Tomorrow. What's your Tomorrow. point? No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He got his hands in all kinds of. You talking about Kevin Durant? Well, he does. Yeah, yeah. LeBron. Huh. We Maybe do. that's why he was tired. Don't do that, Skip. I don't know. Maybe he stayed up too late watching Liverpool. Right. There you go, Skip. You mess happen. up everything. It does happen. All right, so, Eddie, most to blame. I'm going to blame the big four, and this is why. Hmm. Uh, They've turned the ball over too many times. Hmm. In the past two games, they've combined for 26 of the 32 team turnovers that they had. Um, they end up losing by three in game four. They lose by game four in game. I mean, they lose by four points in game five. Both games giving up 18 points off of their turnovers. Yep. And if you want to point to one person in particular off of the big four to blame one, but I blame all of them, you have to go with Draymond Green because he has 11 of their 26 turnovers. One crucial one last night. In game four, he had five turnovers, and his sixth one last night the being the most crucial that was it. one of the six. Yeah. He had six last night. So I will have to go with that because they're, they're still in the game. If they take care of the basketball, you can't give a team like Houston extra possessions. Yep. They had six extra possessions last night, only win by four points. A turnover is not the same as a bad shot. I'd much rather have somebody take a bad shot because you have an opportunity to maybe get fouled. You have an opportunity to get an offensive rebound. When you turn the ball over, you might as well take the basketball, just set it down, and say, you guys, go ahead. You get no opportunities not to make a back cut, not to draw a foul. You just turn the basketball over and give the other team possession. So, to me, look from, from looking at this game, it's the, the big four to blame for turning it over. And if you want to point one out, it will have to be Draymond because he has mm. 11 in the last That's two games. That's interesting. Whoa, whoa. So now so now we blame the fourth best player on the team mm. for losing this game. No, I'm saying he had 11 turnovers. I, I blamed all four of them, but if you wanted to pinpoint one person, yep. out of that, uh, out of That's those four point. guys, he has 11 he had, of their 26 turnovers. Yeah, he had six I'm, last I'm night. I'm going to pinpoint one. KD. Mm. So, oh, so, I'm so shocked. What, what am I supposed to do about shocked. nine or twenty? What am I <laughs> supposed to do about nine or twenty-four in game four, eight or twenty-two in game five? What am I supposed to do about two or nine in the second half? You're supposed to criticize. What it. am I supposed to do about them zero turnovers? How do you mm. oh, one one before you? I'm gonna let you get in here. How do you have zero turnovers when you got Clay and Steph on the court? Assists, you mean zero zero, zero assists yes. when you got Clay and Steph on the court? Go ahead, that's that's pretty that's pretty tough to do. But if you don't turn the ball over, you don't know what kind of rhythm. Either one of these guys could get in. If you're not, if you're taking away possessions from yourself, mm -hmm. those four guys take away 26 possessions in the last two games mm -hmm. from their self. 
that's not an opportunity for KD to get a rhythm, not for Steph to get a rhythm, Clay to get a rhythm, or anybody else that's coming in. The dude shot 46 times in the last two games. That's 23 shots a game. You can't get a rhythm in 46 shots? Well, you're turning that ball over, it's, and you're, you're the taking the ball out the net. You're not. You're getting the ball pushed back at you, or you either you're taking it out the net off of a turnover. You don't have chances to get out in the open court when you get a stop or run your offense. Well, Skip Bayless, I know you come from the school of thought like I do. Mm -hmm. The best player... If he gets the bulk of the credit, he has to shoulder the lion's share That's of the blame. True. True. And Kevin Durant has mm -hmm. not played well in the second half of any of these ball games. No. He, hadn't, he hasn't shot the ball well in the past two ball games. And you talk about his defense, well, normally he was a great help defender. He has two blocks in these series, one steal in five games, 10 assists, two blocks, one steal. Can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. I, I, Mm -mm. Yeah, Don't sugarcoat it. Yeah, I can't. Not that he hadn't played well, he's played pathetically. And James, yeah. look at James Harden numbers. And they won three of these four games. Yeah. With James Harden playing like he's I playing. don't know. Them turnovers. So I blame Andre Iguodala. Oh, my goodness. Come on, you ought to be yeah. And, and he ain't even on the court, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even on the court. Well, he wasn't there. So I, he four all-stars and two MVPs. Mm -hmm. You talking about Iggy. It, it is, though. It, it was crucial last night. If Iggy it. had been there, he takes the Quinn Cook shot. See the Quinn Cook? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Quinn Cook is wide up. The poor kid winds up with the basketball in his hands. You felt this before, this kind of pressure. Nobody's there because Chris Paul is down at the other end, and all of a sudden, the whole season rides. If you make this shot, you're up two, right, with 40 seconds left. Yeah. Can you hang on to that? I don't know, but I kind of like your chances if that ball goes in. It wasn't a terrible shot that he shot. That was a but, good shot. But the point was, that was going to be an Iguodala shot. He would have been on the floor in place. There's no way Quinn Cook's going to end the game at that point, right? right? right. True. Okay. So, but back to your point, who do I say is Golden State's best player by far? Can who is the did. MVP and the most important? I know we went back and forth yeah. about that. It's Kevin Durant. Who's the number one option? It's Kevin Durant who has turned into Kevin Ducant now because he can't do anything. I don't even know who he is anymore. I can't recognize him. So I will give him all the blame, but I'm going to give the Houston defense a whole bunch of credit because yeah, they are bullying Golden State. They're making Golden State play like the Rockets play, just iso ball, and, and Golden State doesn't know how to play iso ball. They don't have James Harden. They, they can't create. Even Steph, he can't create like James Harden can create. No. At least James he doesn't can, have the size. He, he doesn't. Or, or the quicks, really, that, that kind of quickness. Or Like James Harden has this sort of effortless glide quickness. We just glide spy people, right? It's just... Yeah. Arizona State, right? Sneaky, yeah. Uh, uh. Forks up, forks up. Forks up? <laughs> yeah. was, was, he, hey. was he better than you at Arizona State? No, I got all them numbers over there. I think you got some hey, numbers on Skip, it. I, I, Skip, I know numbers. a guy that's sitting at home. He's not watching Sister Act. He's watching, says, Steph, oh, oh, you thought it was easy for me too, huh? Mm. Now you see when somebody else start doing their that's ISO thing, true. doing their own thing, and I be wanting the ball, yep. and all of a sudden he jacking up 30 footers. Yep. Hit the side of the backboard. He airballed another. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not as easy as it looked, huh, Steph? Well, I think another guy was sitting home key, key, keying <laughs> when Russell and company were eliminated by Utah, right? Oh, of course. So they've been going back, back and, and forth, forth, right? Yes. But you're right. I'm sure he was somewhere last night saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, in the end, Houston has imposed its defensive will on Golden State, and I've never seen anything quite like this because I didn't see this coming. Maybe you guys no, did, no, no, but no, I didn't see no, this. Not, not, not at all. Like this. These two, these last two games have been bizarre, and neither one of them went over 100 points, and they're the two best scoring teams in, in the league. Yeah. So seeing the defense, I, I just like the fact that it looked like Houston – is bullying the bully now. They are. You know, once, yeah. and I think the turning point was when James, Hart, James dunked on it was Draymond. Was that was like statement. a big, yeah, it exactly. Resounded. That was so big, and it yeah. went through the whole team. It did. The whole stadium, and I mean, it jumped off the screen to me, and I was like, this could be, and even my partner sitting next to me, he was like, that's probably the turning point right there. Mm. If they win this game and win this series, we could talk about that right there being a And then tournament. Draymond tried to dunk and got blocked by the rim. Yep. And, and then he got, got, by, got blocked by, by Capella, Capella last night. He and did. he got body bagged again by James Harden. And the thing yep. is, Skip, is that this is the way the Rockets have to win. They can't win a 125, 132, nope. 127, 132, 130, 28 ball game. Mm -hmm. They can't win that. But you muck it up because you got better defenders and they switch everything. 
They have no problem letting uh, uh, Capella be out there one on one with Steph Curry. They have no problem. No, but it, but it feels like there are eight Rockets on the floor at one time, right? On defense, because yeah, they they switch, but they're like two of them over here and yeah. then two of them they over look here. Like a total different team. And yeah. when Capella's in the ball game, they feel comfortable because he's going to challenge everything. He got another block. Got Draymond last night. He blocked an uh, he another did. shot. So they know he's lurking. And they do a great job is that when uh, uh, KD is posted up on Eric Gordon or, or CP3, as soon as he, he backs, he backs. As soon as he turns, here come PJ. Mm -hmm. Here come Ariza. And they're going to force him to give him up. But, you know, Kevin Durant, in his mind, I can do this. I can win this game because his instincts. See, as long as everything's going good, he's going to pass. Uh, and Russ says, see, yeah, he passing. Oh, what happens? When that game gets close, what is he going to do, Skip? Because he's like, I'm the best player. And what he did in the championship game, every run that the Cavaliers tried to make at him, they could dump the ball to him, and he went and got buckets. Mm. Well, in this situation right here, he's struggling with his shot a little bit, and he's playing right into Houston's hand. We'll let you take that 25-footer over, over uh, uh, P.J. Tucker over or Ariza. Yep. You know, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, starting the game four, James Harden's defensive effort. And we, we talked about how bad he had been defensively. Right. And being the best player on your team, you usually got to be the hardest worker because that just trickles down throughout the rest of your team. His defensive effort and how he's been playing these last two games, he hasn't played well offensively, no. but we got to give him credit for playing D. That, that rip, he, right. he had two back-to-back -back steals. Ripped, ripped. Then he got an interception against yep. Kevin Durant last night. He did. Run out. And, and listen, on the play, of the, the, the play of the game is Steph going solo just trying to get to the mm -hmm. rim, and guess who stopped him from getting to the rim and pushed him clear outside the, run, the lane for that runner? Steph ain't got that it little It was kiss. James Harden. You yeah. know, my guy got that kiss off the backboard for that game winner? That kiss? The one where it accidentally hit the No, backboard? he wouldn't do that. He called it. I don't they're just getting way more physical with them, man. You got oh, to. They're getting you, They're mucking it up, like you said. They're getting physical. Bodies, hard fouls, whatever it takes, not letting anybody get. Just like, and a prime example was the last play. You see how Ariza was on Kevin Durant. Up there, even though Kevin Durant wasn't in a scoring position, he was just draped all over. And, and, and You're not going to get comfortable. At, at, at mid-court, Skip, the best player, the guy that you say you won't take in the shot, he ain't even, he quit did, on the I plate. I said, I don't want him taking it anymore because he was saying, no moss. No moss. Why would that seven, that seven foot monster? How many times do I have to say no, that in one seven, show? That's a seven foot yeah. monster. Yeah. That's, no, the best a seven foot the, monster. that's the best player on the planet. Yeah. And he turned down the shot in game four. He flipped on him quick. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't flip quick. quick. I just go off what I see. If I see it, I say it on this show. I've always done that. Boy, you turn stay seven inches quicker than Mike Mike Flynn. Well, you're still hanging on to retired. Oh, I know no, that. no, I got uh, it. Uh, uh, you'll see tonight. I'm going to call you yeah. to answer the phone, too. <laughs> answer the phone. It, no, it'll be I'm early. I don't it'll be early. Phones. Oh, yeah, I know you mm -hmm. don't. I'm, I'm like, Skip, I know you right there. This joke is. No, he's looking at your number. Yeah. And then he texts me back, You need something? Yeah, that's what I told you. <laughs> that's why I told you I needed something. Yeah. I got to do Facebook Live after the game tonight. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, why is Kerr saying that he feels great? That's what I don't get. I don't either. And he's giving his team constant excuses they don't constant. need right now. He right. just keeps saying, you know what? It's, it's smug. It's arrogant. It's like, hey, we're, we're a dynasty. Yeah, my brother good. last night was mad. Like, from the finals. I'm blaming Steve. He, he started to blame Steve Kerr yep. a little bit last night when I was talking yeah. to my brother about this. He was like, Steve Kerr, man, I'm starting to question his, his coaching abilities and his... Yep. His adjustments that he's making, what, what or his lack thereof. Yeah, I don't see any lack adjustments. Lack thereof, yeah. They're, they're like, we're Golden State. We don't, for a while, Dan Tony was saying, we don't change anything. Well, now Steve Kerr better change how, how do you How do you coach when guys can shoot the ball from 28 feet and splash it? Well, you want them to move their bodies, man. And they're not, there's not ball movement and there's not body movements. Usually Golden State is a, a pretty game to watch. Yes, they, that ball's is. hopping around. It's not yeah. doing that now. It's kind of sticking to one side of the court. Um, 18 assists, guys, guys 18 end up, turnovers. Yeah, guys end up just going one-on-one, -on -one and that's not their brand of basketball. They had better hope that Chris Paul cannot play in game six. And get to game seven. Because if he can play, I, I think Houston feels real good about winning. They feel real good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're playing with the confidence, and we'll have to see. Mm -hmm. And CB3 is getting that MRI today, mm -hmm. so we it didn't look good. Did not oh, look Jack, good on oh, that hamstring. Skip, I want another old ball off. Oh, Jack, you know, he bet me he had Golden State last night. He bet you a bottle? Yeah, no. Really? <laughs> No, I'm, over club, I'm over me a club have a bottle service. I ain't got another hand, but that's all you can get. <laughs> well, that's all right. Thank you for no joining us. No mercy. Johnny Manziel signed a two-year deal with the Hamilton Tiger Cats of the Canadian <laughs> Football League on Saturday, but head coach June Jones said that Manziel is likely to be the team's backup quarterback all season. Yesterday, Johnny talked about his return to the football field. Let's take a listen. I realized the gravity of my situation, though, and that you know I've made mistakes in the past that um, you know I'm not proud of, and 
there's not a lot of room for error at all. I'm not proud of how you know my time was in Cleveland and the, and the decisions that I made. You know, I felt like sitting here at, at 25 years old versus 21, I look back with a lot of knowledge and, and, a, and a lot of uh, you know regret at the same time. But you know, my personal life, when that's in order, I'm staying positive. Good things seem to happen in a lot of different aspects of my life. So um, that's where it starts. Everything else is just you know a bonus on, on what I'm doing right in my personal life. We're now joined by FS1 mm. NFL analyst Eric Mangini. Mm. Thank you for being here. But we're going to start this thing with Shannon. Do you expect Johnny to be the backup quarterback this year? I do. Um, Johnny hadn't played football in two years. And I know everybody's saying, well, that's not the NFL. But they still play a high brand of football. We've had some Hall of Famers start up there and end up coming to the NFL and mm -hmm. end up going to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. He hadn't played in two years. Uh, the guy that's the starter has been in this offense for an extended period of time. The biggest concerns that I have for Johnny Skip is June Jones, the head coach, going to let him play off script because that's when he's at his best. If you make Johnny Manziel says, okay, here's the play, and this is what I want you to do, I don't see how jo Johnny is not successful in that style of an offense. If you let him get off script and you say, Johnny, it's okay, he's going to be fine. But Masoli has a, a, a decided head start on him. Mm -hmm. He knows the offense. He's been playing football continuously mm -hmm. as opposed to a guy that hadn't played football in two years and has no idea but, uh, about the offense. This is not like the NFL skip where you draft a guy high, a first-round draft pick, and you know eventually that he's going to play. That's not, what, that's not how it works in Canada. Mm -hmm. You have to beat this guy out in order for you to play. And Johnny needs to learn the <laughs> offense and get reacclimated to playing the game of football, which he's been away from for two years. Well, it's, it's not just a function of learning the offense. It's a function of learning the game. Yes. And Doug Flutie talked a lot about that. It's very different. I saw a game up there last year. There's 12 guys in the field. Everybody's motioning at one, <laughs> at one time. There's only three downs. Now, now what plays to his advantage is the field is wider. wider True. And the field is longer, so there's a lot of space for him to operate. But he has to beat out Jeremiah Mazzoli, who's been there six years, had a really good season last year. I mean, his numbers, 15, I think, what is it, like 15 touchdowns, five, five picks. Mm -hmm. A pretty, pretty yeah. good player, pretty accomplished player. And the question is whether Johnny can operate in that environment and, and be the consistent guy that he's trying to be right now. And that, that's going to be a, a real challenge for him. I like what he says. I like the things that he's done with his life. I, I'm surprised he's not in an NFL camp. I think he's a lottery ticket where if you hit on him, you could hit mm -hmm. big. But I do think it's going to take him some time to transition up in Canada. And, and whether or not he can stay the course is still a big question mark. That is a big question. But start or no start is no question to me. He's Johnny Football. This is, I think, the smallest market in the Canadian Football League, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. They have a rabid fan base. The stadium only holds about 24,000. But Johnny is a lightning rod, you know this and mm -hmm. I know it, who will light it up in this brand and style of football. I'm sorry, Jeremiah Masoli or Johnny Football. I, they'll just go. It, it, he's, he's a drawing card. He's their ticket to the top. He's, he's everything that everybody will talk about in the whole league, that it will be all about Johnny Manziel, will he or won't he? And again, I think I'm a fan of him. He's on the field, not off the field. I love everything he's saying, as you point out. I ran into him the other day, I told you, mm -hmm. and he's not in good shape. He's in the best shape of his life. He looked sensational. He looked like he had grown an inch to me. He looked 6'1", and he's carrying a real solid 210 and he's going to be running it, and he's going to be throwing it. And I think June Jones, who has got some mad scientist yeah. in him, will love being able to scheme with Johnny Manziel. Is he off script? You, you can kind of keep him on off script, you know? Like well, the thing is with him, Skip, because June is known for the run and shoot. Yep. So everything's open up, and everybody's known for the run and shoot in Canada. And so now the thing yep. you have to be cautious of is, it, is Johnny hitting one of those creases. Because when you spread out and all of a sudden you try to get to him and you open up a lane, now he takes the, he takes the, ball, takes mm -hmm. the ball up the field. But the question is, Skip, he's still been away from the game for two years. And with any talent, if you don't use it, it, it goes away. So he's mm -hmm. going to have to get back in the flow of things of dropping back. Look, Skip, he's not an X is a no guy. Mm -mm. That's not what he is. He's, he's, he's not, he doesn't play the game with his mind. He's he not, does not. He, he's not like that. But you have to be – there'll be some growing pains, as, mm -hmm. as Coach said. There'll be some growing pains. Mm -hmm. The question is, how much is June Jones going to let him get off script? 
But I don't, I don't even think this this is just a pure function of, of X's and O's because it, it's not even a game that he's used to. Right. He can't even rely on his background and, and everything that he's done to this point. Yeah, granted, it's football at the end of the day, but everything looks radically different. Right. Those coverages are different. Wow. The way the offense runs is different. The, the, the speed of the game is different. He's got to get used to that as well. Right. And, and part of being mature or, or maturing is you, you're going to have to be a student of the game. You're right. going to have to improve that level. You can't just go up there and say, yeah, I'm going to do whatever I want we, and, and, and everybody should be happy with that because I'm Johnny Manziel. That may have played before, right. but that ship has sailed. Yeah. He, it's okay, it's a different thing. He played in the Southeastern Conference, and he yeah. won the Heisman Trophy. And Cliff, That's when it played well. And Cliff Kingsbury used to tell me stories about how Johnny would come to the sideline apologizing for breaking the play down and doing what he wanted to do. And Cliff would tell him, you never have to apologize for throwing a touchdown pass. And sometimes he didn't have to apologize for running 60 yards for But here's touchdown. the difference, Skip, is that you can do that in college. These are professionals. Now, granted, all these players and some of these players might not ever reach the NFL, mm -hmm. but that's still a high level of football. And the thing, we've seen great college players, e man, you coached a lot of them, have great success. What's the Ohio State uh, a D lineman that you guys drafted? Uh, oh, Vernon really? Goldster. Did, did you draft go him? There? Yeah, did I draft him? Yeah. I drafted Darrell Revis, too. Can we talk about him? That's but I'm a good I, I, that no, no, but I'm just saying, you can have, we've seen guys have a level of success in, in, in college, and then when they come to the NFL, Skip, I don't believe Johnny can just, you can't just, well, just run around like he did, because most of his plays, Johnny jumped into our vernacular, Skip, in Birmingham. When he ran around and he threw that ball and they ended up beating Alabama, number one Alabama. That I had never heard of Johnny Manziel before then. No, I don't. He, outside he, of he that also in. threw a sweet post corner that was yeah. a scripted from the pocket yeah. throw that won, that broke the game open. But most of it, he I was know. just like, I, I got it. No, I he <laughs> did it. Get, and, get, go ahead. And you're going to give guys the benefit of the doubt if they if they built up some credibility and they've and they've shown that they can be successful like like he was in college. But at this point. That's not who he is. This is this is his last chance. He's got to come in that environment and a show that he belongs and b show that he's going to contribute and, and c show that he's going to stay on task in terms of mm -hmm. his personal life. Otherwise, they're going to ship him out. I think he's yeah, making no, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I got it. This year and okay, but I know Jeremiah Masoli from Oregon. He started with Chip mm -hmm. Kelly, then he got in trouble and Chip's sent him packing and he went to Ole Miss and he didn't get drafted and he signed with the 49ers. I can't remember if you were, no, you wouldn't have been there at that point. Mm -hmm. But he, they cut him and he bounced around and he went to the CFL, he went to Edmonton, he got traded to Hamilton and he started the last 10 games last year for June when June took over. So is he really the incumbent starter? He went six and four last year. I don't know. It's right. Johnny football, man. You don't think they're going to play him? Oh, they'll play him. Come on. <clears throat> is he going to beat him out, Skip? Yep, I think he'll beat him out. Okay, well, if he beats him out, I mean, he deserves to play. Listen, Johnny Manziel is special. He he is a special talent. Not off the field, but on the field, hey. Have you seen anything on uh, the field in this little time in Cleveland? Well, uh, w when you're having drug and alcohol issues, okay. you don't see much on the field. Well, I hope hopefully he's gotten that, yep. that part taken care of, and then the on field will take mm -hmm. care of itself. I agree, and I, I can't vouch for that at all. I have no idea. I, I know you love hard skip, mm -hmm. I know and I hey. know you love Johnny. <laughs> A lot, but... Hey, I wasn't the only one. John Gruden was just beating the drum, taking number one overall. Houston, Ron Jaworski came completely around on ESPN, he, was saying, take him top five. He, he man, it, yeah. becomes, it becomes real easy to take someone that you don't have to coach. John Gruden got the job at the Raiders. He ain't called Johnny Manziel. He traded for Christian Hackenberg. Okay, but you're, you're putting your pride on the line on national TV. I think that's... Pride uh, don't have to coach you. Know? you. But, but that is a fair point. He could have really brought Johnny Manziel into yeah. training camp for very little money, a, a you know? veteran minimum salary, and it's one of 90 guys, and if okay, he hits, but, but he what, gets what big. What just happened, what was it, two weeks ago? Johnny had another medical issue. I don't know yeah. what happened. Uh, he took too much of whatever lithium. he's taking. He's trying to yeah. figure out his okay. The dosing. They, 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 they upped it. Which oh. happens. Yeah. yeah. Which happens. It does, or sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. I don't I mean, know. If, if that got, because John Gruden said, it, when the Houston Texans took uh, Jadavian Clowney, I would take Johnny Manziel and would look back. That's mm -hmm. going to take him number one overall. You could have had him for a couple of hundred thousand dollars on your, as you said, he mm -hmm. man, bring him in and see what he kicked the tires and yeah, see what he got. One in ninety guys. Yeah, yeah. If he works, he works. Heck, if he doesn't, he doesn't. I, I talked to Nick Saban about him, and again, he had put some big numbers up mm -hmm. on Nick twice. They lost the second game at College Station, but it was like 40, forty-five to forty-two. 45. Yeah, he threw for over four hundred yeah, yards against Coach Saban. 
again, was it Mike Evans making Johnny Man? That helped yes. have that big stud receiver. But even Nick Saban said, yeah, I would take him high. His only problem was, can he stay healthy running around like that in your league? You know, that's, that's tough. That's hard. And look, this is, this is a great environment for him mm -hmm. in the sense that the, the length of the field, the width of the field, the openness yeah. of it, yeah. it, really, it really does cater to his skill yeah. set. But there's so many of the other questions that he's got to just overcome to get to the starting point. And I'm sure with, with June Jones, he's looking at like, I've got a guy who's been consistent, who, who's been productive for me, and now I'm going to go with this guy, and you don't know what you're going to get week well, in, week out. Now maybe the owner comes into play, and the owner says, I want to play Johnny Manziel. You don't think that could happen? It could happen. Look, it's ha it happened in Cleveland. They wanted <laughs> the owner came into play, and they drafted Johnny well, Manziel. Yeah, and it got, got the head coach and, and the general manager fired. <laughs> Their first preseason game, happened. though, one week from today. <laughs> one week from so today, we will find know. out. And I, I think we can all agree we want a healthy mm -hmm. Johnny. I mean, on, on the, the field, field yeah. off the mm -hmm. field. Yes. It's humbling, though, to hear him say, this is where my life is. Mm -hmm. I have to handle this situation the best way I can. I'm rooting for him. So Who doesn't love a comeback? All right, Eric, thank you. Thank you, guys. For joining us. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Keep an eye out for a weekend edition of the podcast tomorrow morning featuring the best discussions and segments from this week. Undisputed will be back on Monday morning at the same time, 930 Eastern. Have a great Memorial Day weekend, everyone. Fox Sports. One of one.